Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel. I am uh, nursing a cold right now, so I apologize <coughs> if I uh, make any disgusting noises. Um, just wanted to show you, I'm in the process right now of cutting the new panels of acrylic to rebuild the cell stack. I have my plates that I took out of the cell after running it for a while. I'm somewhat surprised at how discolored the negative side of the plates became. That's the positive side. They remained clean, but the negative sides still became quite brown. And I also wanted to show you, this is the saw blade that I'm using. And I want to recommend this. This, this uh, tooth arrangement has the teeth facing down so that when you're cutting through the material, instead of pulling the chips up on top of the surface as you're trying to see the line that you're going through, this actually pushes it down below the surface and keeps the top of the material clean as you're going along the line. I discovered this blade when I was redoing my uh, kitchen sink and cutting the countertop. Uh, they were, this was recommended for the, the countertop and uh, I've been using these ever since. So that's just a little little tip there for you. Just to show you how nice this works, I'm going to take and line up the notch that I'm cutting. I'm cutting off this piece of material right here. My line is, or my cut line is just to the outside of the line that I've scribed, and I'm holding it like uh, within a quarter of an inch from the edge of my bench so that it adds some back support to the plastic as I'm cutting through it. You have to go very slowly through this plastic because otherwise it will shatter. I've broken off a couple of corners already. And just to show you here how nicely this cuts. Okay, you'll notice how all of the chips were expelled down below and I was able to easily see my line as I'm continuing to cut through. I'm using exactly the same assembly technique as I did the last time and I really must say this is a this assembly technique is a winner. I've got a, a utility knife blade with a very sharp edge on it. Just use it to start the plates, start separating the plates, start one edge of the cable tie, bring it up to the top of the plates and then just work it in all the way down. Like so. I'll take my little steel rule and tap them in to a preset depth and then glue my panels on top and bottom and uh, wait a couple of days for this thing to dry. Okay, I'm just going to show you how I press these down. There is a bunch of lines scribed lengthwise on this rule that I can use as a guide to measure against. Push it down to the specified depth. Move on to the next one. This way we get them nice and straight and all even. leaving enough room in between the plates for the adhesive to squeeze into and between the plates a little bit without coming all the way up to the edge of the nylon cable ties because we don't unless you want to leave the nylon cable ties in place you don't want the adhesive coming up to meet it otherwise it will become very difficult to remove them from between the plates I suppose you could leave them in there, but you're going to decrease the amount of plate surface area by the thickness of the cable ties, or the width of the cable ties, plus the depth of the glue that pushes in. So here we go, digging into my last tube of goop. Need to pick some of this up pretty soon. I will say this also, using the clear acrylic makes it, it's going to make it a lot easier aligning 
this on the edge of the plate stack once I'm ready to put it together because you can see through it. Now at the top I got to go right to the edge because this meets up with the top edge of the plates and we want it sealed all the way up. That looks good. And drop it straight on. Oh now that's cool. I get to see I get to see the glue actually pressing down in between the plates. That is a very neat visual effect, I gotta tell you. Now I'm gonna carefully pick this up and squeeze it tightly and flip it over. And do the same thing to the top. Put a couple of wooden blocks on either end to compress the center of the plates, which do bow out a little bit because of the pressure points on the top and on the bottom. That'll hold them nice and parallel as it as the glue sets up, and we'll let it dry for a couple of days. Second plate is ready to go on. I could have done this beforehand, but eh. silly me. Now, as I press on the, the wooden blocks this way, I can see the plates are still moving in just a tiny bit more. So I'm going to take one more elastic band. I'm going to slide this whole thing back. A little bit, teeter it on the edge, and put another elastic band right around the middle. And I guess that will do. I'll put a weight on top of here and a couple of spare pieces of plastic on the bottom because right now it's sort of rocking on the elastic band on this wooden block that I've got here so I'll just take a couple of pieces. These are the panels that will eventually go underneath where the wooden blocks are now. But right now I'll just use them as a base to rest it on and I'll take a couple more pieces of plastic and lay, lay something heavy on top of this and just let it dry. See you in a few days.